Hello everybody, this is B, and we are back again, and I would have said, yo, we're going to be doing a special game, which you guys are going to get spoilers, but I had planned to do Doki Doki Plus, uh, but time has not been in my favor, it might be later in this week, I have no idea yet so far, but we're going to continue with Our Life Begins. I, th I think that was the full title of it. It's a really cute game. I really enjoy this. And I hope you guys are enjoying it too. Because it's it's definitely a game that should be looked into. Because, like I said, it's a lot of fun. And I'm like over here enjoying it. So. The car ride home was quiet. With only the radio providing escape from silence. Lizzie had been in better spirits now. But the closer you got to our neighborhood... The more she wiggled in her seat and frowned out the window. She knew what was coming when you all got back home. Clearly, she was dreading it. Soon enough, Mom was turning into our street, then reversing in the driveway. When she cut the ignition, it was dead silent. No one spoke, only unbuckled their seatbelts and opened their doors. Should I, should I turn the sound down a little bit? Would that be better? If I turn that down, maybe you guys can hear me better. I hope so. No one's... Yeah, we've read that. Once everyone was inside and done taking off their shoes, she propped her hands on her hips. So. Now then, Mr. Holden's car is in his driveway, so he should be back from work. That's good news, isn't it, Elizabeth? You and Cove can hash things out before the day's done. Lizzie didn't complain or put up a fight. Her head ducked so she didn't have to meet anyone's eyes. She nodded once. Good. Let's move to the kitchen. Mom went over to the house phone, the rest of you following behind her. Mommy put a gentle hand on Lizzie's shoulder as they walked side by side. You watched them from the back. There was This was only happening because you told on Lizzie. You didn't regret it. You felt a little guilty, like you had betrayed your sister. You hadn't liked doing it, but you had to. Uh. You hadn't liked it doing it, but you had to. Being a tattletale didn't feel good, and you wouldn't want someone else to tell your moms everything you did. Still, your mom had asked directly, and you wanted to be a liar even less. The four of you stood around the kitchen in a lopsided square. All eyes were on Leslie, who kept her gaze on her feet. You remember the number for Cove's house, don't you, honey? Lizzie jerked her head in another nod, sullen. Without further prompting, she stepped forward and began to dial. Mom reached over and pressed a button on the base. Suddenly you could hear the phone ringing. She turned on the speaker. The phone rang a couple of times, then stopped. Mr. Holden's warm voice came through the other end. Evening, Holden's residence. Lizzie looked over at Mommy, unsure. She nodded encouragingly. Aww. Hi, Mr. Holden. It's, um, Lizzie. Can I talk to Cove? Absolutely. Lizzie? Hi? What a surprise. But of course you can say hey to the boy. He sounded cheery as usual, though definitely meant it when he said it was a surprise. You thought hard, and you were sure that your sister had never called Cove's house before. Mom spoke up before Mr. Holden or Lizzie could say anything more. Her arms were crossed over her chest. Her lips pursed. Hi, Cliff. No, Laney. B. Oh. Cl Hi, Cliff. No, Laney, B, and I are here, too. Good evening. We're sorry to bother you so late. You spoke up to say hello, too. Hi, Mr. Holden. The gang's all here, huh? Is something the matter? His voice grew a bit concerned. Mommy was quick to reassure him. No. Well, yes, but it's going to be okay. Lizzie and Cove got into a bit of a fight today. We were hoping that the two of them could talk and make up. Is this a good time for you and Cove? A fight? Cove didn't tell me anything about that when I came home. It does explain the funk he's been in tonight. He chuckled lightly. Despite that, it didn't seem like he really thought it was funny. 
Anyway, it's good. You didn't catch us at a bad time. I'll go grab them for you. There was some shuffling on the other end. He must not have gone far because you could still hear him calling out. Oh, shoot. After a beat of silence, there was more muffled talking from Cove's dad. Come on, bud. Lizzie called just so she could talk to you. Bee's on the other end listening, too. Don't you want to say hi? It took a bit of back and forth through the conversation and seemed one-sided since you didn't hear Cove properly. Eventually, Cove took the phone from his dad. Hello? Uh, hey, it's Lizzie. Yeah, I know. Dad told me. Cove's tone was defensive. Lizzie turned to Mom, scowling. One stern look from her, though, and Lizzie turned away. Sorry. I just called to say I'm sorry for not playing nice with you today. I won't do it again. Lizzie's eyes were downcast, her voice low. You could tell she felt uncomfortable apologizing to Cove in front of everyone. She was still being genuine about feeling bad. Cove must have realized that, too, because he sighed quietly. I want gold. And I think B should win, too. Really? He thought you were worth gold, even though you hadn't even wanted it? Lizzie was momentarily stunned silent by the demand. She probably forgot that had even happened already. Alright, we all win the gold. Okay, I guess. I'm sorry, too. A sense of relief washed over everyone as he accepted the apology. Yeah, we friends again! Mom uncrossed her arms while Mommy's shoulders relaxed. Lizzie's eyebrows raised up, and you wondered if she thought that he re he would refuse her apology. Dad, can I get off the phone now? You can't see him, but it was obvious that Cove felt awkward about the situation. He had come off uncomfortable the entire time, really. Yeah, yeah you can go back to your room if you want. Be sure to say goodbye first, though. Um, bye, Lizzie. Bye, Lizzie. Uh, I mean, bye. <laughs> bye, B. You perked up at the mention of your name. You smiled even though he couldn't see it. Bye, Cove. Ah, cute. Handed up, handed the phone, handed the phone to his dad and left. Silence. Silence. Uh, since Mr. Holden spoke up. All's well that ends well, as they say. Thanks for arranging this. I'm sure he appreciates it too. As mom replied, Lizzie tugged on mommy's hand to catch her attention. Can I go now too? Sure, sweetie. Thank you very much for apologizing to Cove. Mom flashed a brief smile at Lizzie and nodded in agreement. Given permission to leave, Lizzie scurried off towards the stairs. She seemed to be feeling much better with the incident behind her. Mom and Mommy returned to the phone, taking it off speaker. They continued talking to Mr. Holden. You can't tell what about. You are glad that was the end of it all. Lizzie and Cove might not get along and probably still won't. But they weren't mad at each other anymore. Mom and Mommy weren't upset either. Everything was finally back to normal. With that thought, you retreated to your room with a spring in your step. Okay, well obviously that's over. We've grown, we've done those running out of days. It was another scorching summer day, the kind where no sooner had you finished one cup of water, you were already filling up again. Everyone else had something on, so that afternoon it was just you and Shiloh. This ha didn't happen much, especially since Cove had arrived. Without Lizzie around, Shiloh looked to you for all the answers. It made you feel pleased, frustrated, nothing really. Pleased. You might not be in double digits like your sister, but he was only seven.
but he's only seven. Being the oldest and getting to lead, to be the leader was a nice change of pace. You drained yet another drink and found out the empty vessel. Your thirst was gone, but you still craved something icy, cold, and refreshing. Something sweet. Something like, it sounds like ice cream to me. Not gonna lie. A popsicle, ice cream cone, and ice cream sandwich. Uh, I'm gonna go with ice cream sandwich. Okay. You craved your soft ice cream sandwich between two cookies. There was nothing like that to be found at home, and you knew without needing to look. Your moms didn't keep sweets in the house. <gasps> the betrayal. Outside, there were plenty of places where such goodies could be attained. But they were shops and demand payment in exchange of their product. You sighed, you voiced your predicament aloud, you asked Shiloh. I want an ice cream sandwich. Shiloh, who had been draped over the soda sofa, perked up. I said soda. Mmm, <laughs> that sounds good. We don't have anything like that in the house. And I don't have any money. Oh, let me check if I have any. Shiloh rummaged in his backpack and proudly produced an assortment of coins, plus one stray button. You set the button aside and counted the coins in a neat pile. Just over a dollar, he announced to Shiloh. He had almost certainly come to the same conclusion, but he had been watching you e expectantly. It's a start. Shiloh beamed at you. We'll need to find some more. Okay. The two of you lifted couch cushions, stuck tiny hands deep down deep crevices in the sofa and under furniture, and scored the back of drawers. Most of what you found was useless or gross. Bent paper clips, fluffy wisps of dust, or sandy, cr sandy crumbs. But every so often, one of you would strike silver or bronze and add it to the growing pile of coin. Dusty and disheveled. From checking every room and squinting into every tiny nook, the two of you finished pulling your finds. Sh Shiloh held his breath as he counted the coins once again. Two dollars, fifty-three cents, and two buttons. You didn't know when the second button had decided to join the party, but you were too pleased with your successful haul to throw it out. Is that enough? You figured he knew the answer, but you appreciated his him recognizing your authority on financial and ice cream matters. You straightened up before making your pronouncements. Yeah, we got enough. You could now afford something at the shop, just one thing, but it was infinitely better than none. Shiloh clasped his hands. Yay! The two of you dashed outside. The promise of sugar boy buoyed you on to your destination where Breath breathless but happy, you stared at the overwhelming number of options. You knew what you wanted, but it wasn't just you who had contributed the funds to get the treat. He seemed to notice your pause. Aren't you getting an ice cream sandwich? Shallow asked as though he was entirely separate from the decision, rather than someone with a stake in the outcome. Do you mind? Ah! My kitty! My kitty messed things up. Do you mind? Charlotte cocked his head to the side. It was your idea. You should choose. You went ahead and got what you wanted originally. Are you really sure it's okay? You try to get something you both wanted. Anyway. It wasn't fair for you to be the only one to decide when he's the main factor into making this happen. Some of the money came directly from his backpack. What do you like? All of them. They're so good. You pressed further. But what do you really like? Popsicles or ice cream? Which is your favorite? Oh, it's so hard to pick. I don't know. Okay. So hard... It's so hard to pick, I don't know. Frustrated, you cut to the heart of the matter. You want me to choose? 
Yeah. And that was that. You got the dessert you wanted originally and hoped Shiloh would actually like it too. Finally, the reward for all of your hard work was in your hands. You bit the ice cream sandwich. The chewy chocolate biscuit complimented the creamy vanilla ice cream outside. You held it out to Shiloh so he could take a turn. He shook his head. You can finish it. He didn't want any? After everything he did to help get it? That was weird. But you... You try to include him. Even if Shiloh said it was okay, every story you'd ever seen on TV or read in the books said that sharing was caring. You stood your ground even as the treat started to trickle dangerously towards your fingers. It's only fair that you have some. We both bought it. But you want it more than I do, and getting to play was a lot of fun already. So you can have it. That's more fair. You held it out to him. I want you to have some even more than I want to finish it. So eat your part. Relenting, Shiloh took the treat and gave it a taste. His eyes lit up. It's really good. Thank you. You smiled, pleased with your good deed. You picked the best one. Did he mean that? Shiloh was always nice, no matter what happened. Even if he hated it, you knew he wouldn't say so. Maybe he thought it was gross, and that's the real reason why he didn't want to take some. You had no idea. You studied him as he ate a little more. He had every appearance of enjoying himself. Still weird. The two of you began to head back home as he ate. You walked side by side on the shore in silence, but your thoughts kept drifting to the boy beside you. Why didn't he speak up for himself? It was almost as if Shallow didn't know how to say what he felt, or was too afraid to. Uh, he thought that was kind of sad. Are we friends? I figured he didn't care. Are we friends? Shallow opened his eyes wide, seemingly caught off guard by the blunt question. Yeah, I think so. He says that, but friends should be able to talk to each other without being scared. If Shiloh wouldn't do that, were you even really friends at all? He rubbed his hands together nervously over your non-reaction. I'm sorry. You weren't sure how sorry he, would, he could be without knowing what he's even apologizing for, but you shook your head. You didn't do anything. It was true. Shiloh hadn't done it something mean. He had gone out of his way to make you happy. That didn't seem like it would it should be a bad thing, yet it bothered you. I just don't know if you like me. It's like it doesn't matter what I do, you're gonna act the same. I could be anybody and you wouldn't care. No, I like you. I really, really like you, B. I wanna be friends. Okay. You smiled hesitantly at him and his fidgeting ceased. Even though you weren't sure if you believed him, this was only making things worse. You decide that maybe there were all types of friends. If Shiloh wasn't able to do things differently, this would have to be alright. Shiloh made you unsure about setting a label on the experience of spending the afternoon with just him. There had been good times and there had been confusing ones. You were positive one thing at least. The treat was delicious and that was nice. The sun was low on the horizon as you returned to your neighborhood. You there you two there you spotted two very familiar figures ahead, Lizzie and Cove. You opened your mouth to make your presence known to them just as you saw the tears on Cove's face. What did you do? You walked straight over Shiloh at your heels. Once there you took a moment to make a joke, accused carefully asked what happened. We found a time machine. The only way you were going to find out was by asking the witnesses. Okay. Okay. Please don't sneeze. Please don't sneeze. Please don't sneeze. Without a time machine, the only way you were going to find out was by asking the witness. Lizzie might have done something wrong. Or done something. But she could have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Or even come to Cove's aid. He wanted to hear the story. Cove, what happened? B, I got yelled at. He took a deep, steadying breath. Some grandparents got mad at me. Aw, oh, I'm sorry. Lizzie jerked her head in the direction of a nearby house. Your heart sunk. You knew exactly what had happened. Every year, the same mean old couple rented out that condo for the summer. 
You, Lizzie, and Shiloh knew to stay away from them, but Cove couldn't have. They're like that to everyone. Even your mom struggled your mom struggled to find anything nice to say about them, but the elderly pair particularly took offense to kids. It didn't matter if they were really nice like Cove. Yeah, Lizzie said th Lizzie said. Lizzie drew herself up at that. She looked pointedly in your direction. Uh huh. I was helping. That's cool. Is there anything I can do? No. No, I just. I'm just gonna stay away. Or you could teach them a lesson. There was a devious glint in her eyes. What? You should ding dong ditch them. Go ring the doorbell and run. It'll be great, cause they're so slow. They'll never catch you. That's dumb. I don't want to go near them ever again. You're saying that because you're a cluck cluck chicken. Cove glared but didn't take the bait. Lizzie turned to you. You're not a chicken, are you? Uh. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are we going to do? Let's just avoid them. you rather just avoid. You looked at the house. Behind those closed doors looked two things, rich in years, but poor in patience. Maybe they deserved retaliation. Maybe they didn't. But that punishment wouldn't be coming from you. It was safer to stay away from them, and you didn't want to give them an opportunity to make Cove sad again. I'm not doing it either. Another chicken for the coop. This is a hen house now. If we're chickens, you're a lizard, Lizzie. She wagged her tongue, guided his face. Still better than a bird brain. Chick, chick, chicken. The condo door opened, revealing one of the two culprits. The old man's wizened face was set in a scowl, which was to say he looked exactly like he always did when you saw him. Maybe that was his normal face. What are you kids doing loitering outside my house? Or maybe he was always just in a terrible mood. Nothing. Nothing? He repeated the word as if it was the greatest crime anyone could commit. Nothing good, more like it. Get lost. It wasn't if he owned the space outside the house, but Cove's eyes, still red from earlier tears, were wide, and you thought it would be best to heed the old man's command. Lizzie took off with Shiloh immediately, trailing after her without so much as a glance back in your direction. So much for your friendship. You waved your arm at Cove, summoning him to follow you, and ran after Lizzie. The old man's hollers propelled you all from the street to the sanctuary of the hill. San San City of the hill. Only once you were safe did you notice the stitch in your chest and the ache of your legs. You flopped down, the blades of grass tickling your face. Lizzie, who had taken the lead in the end, was already lazing on the ground. The four of you took a moment to catch your breath and enjoy the feeling of the cool grass against your skin. Oh. Hey, Cove. Cove lifted his head. I told you there were mean grandparents around here. Cove rolled his eyes, then decided this wasn't dismissive enough and rolled his whole body away from your sister. Lizzie chose to ignore his response and started chatting to Silo, who eagerly joined in the conversation. In the back of your mind, you knew you'd be the second fiddle again to Shiloh once Lizzie came around. It always went like that. And it was fine, you thought. You still felt a little sad after how much time you spent together. And it was always annoying. And it was fine. Shiloh should, could prefer Lizzie as much as he wanted to. There were other things to attend to anyways. You wriggled closer to Cove. He had calmed down for the most part and was inspecting a flower. His finger pinched the stem and tilted the white petals towards him. That's a poppy. Cove glanced at you in acknowledgement, then back to the flower. And the type of poppies on this hill had this, the name White Linen Poppy, Mom told me. He quirked a smile. That's funny. He ran a finger around the edge of the petals. It doesn't feel like cloth. You... You'd need a lot of them to make anything. He nodded and released a delicate plant. Evaluate. Evaluation complete. This is my favorite kind of flower. But I didn't know what it was called. 
thanks. Oh my god. I actually really like snap, uh, not snap flowers, but snap dragons. Hibiscus, the peonies, orchids, buttercups. I like roses, mine too. I like tulips. My Mary. Please don't capitalize or pluralize the word. Oh. It was about to freak out on me, huh? Marigolds are my favorite. Marigolds? Huh. Neat. I call them marigolds, but... Thanks. You moved onto your back with a small smile and looked at the darkening sky. The blanket of clouds reminded you of a thick throat you curled under on cold, rainy days. You wondered if the clouds would be as soft. They lazily floated on by, splitting from each other, merging and morphing into new shapes. You saw a dolphin, you saw a car, you saw an alpaca. Uh, alpaca. You saw a fluffy alpaca in the sky. You nudged Cove and pointed to it. Can you see the alpaca? Cove joined you in gazing skywards. Whoa. It's more like a llama. Hey. He chuckled at your reaction. I don't see it. All the sun's light faded from the sky and the moon rose higher. Lizzie got to her feet, dusting strands of grass from her bare legs, and surveyed her surroundings. The ocean, visible from the crest of the hill, beckoned with every sweep of the tide. Let's go to the beach. There was no argument from the other two. Shiloh was still Shiloh, and Cove would never say no to going to the shore. He was a child of the sea. You wanted to go there too. You were happy to go. So you eagerly joined the others in descending down the hill to the water. You stepped onto the sand for the second time that day, but it felt different at night. The beach was nearly quiet nearly quiet at this hour and abandoned sand castles and footsteps in the sand too big to belong to any of you were the only indication of how busy it had been only hours earlier the four of you kicked shoes off and removed socks and walked along the water's edge the waves tickled your feet i wonder what would happen if you try to take a bath in the ocean with shampoo and everything that would be bad for the fish I didn't say anyone would do it. Jeez, you don't have to be serious about everything. You're the one who asked what would happen. That is what would happen. It hurt the fishes. Did I just read fishes instead of fish? It should have been... It should, okay, whatever. Uh, I like bubble baths at home. They're a lot of fun. Me too. Bubble baths are luxurious. You... You'd never heard Lizzie use that word before. Mommy loves to have bubbles in her bath. She'll turn the lights off and have candles. I'm going to do that next time. Hey, when's your mom come to pick you up anyway? Not for a while. She's busy. What about your dad? How come you never talk about him? Nobody does. Don't, don't you know you're not supposed to ask something like that? Why would you, somebody want to talk about something that they never talk about? You kept your eyes on the ground, watching your toes get swallowed by the waves. Even if Shiloh never seemed upset when his this topic came up, it made you feel awkward just for having both your moms. It's okay. I'm like Lizzie and B. I don't have a dad. Um, but I don't have two moms. I just have one. She's really great. Oh, sorry. I only have one now, too. My mom isn't here. She's back home. It's just me and my dad. Aw. Aw, I never had a dad or anything, so I don't feel bad. It's really sad that your mom's gone. And we're gonna have to save. Here? We're gonna save on three. Unfortunately, we're out of time, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!